and welcome and today I'm going to talk about doing a ski season and how to make the most out of your ski season and um, because when I was trying to plan mine organize things I felt like there just wasn't actually that much out there a good few people have messaged me recently asking questions so I'm going to try answer some of those questions in this video and um, so basically yes I'm actually currently still in France and um, I moved to France and was kind of I'll probably do a my experience in France in the past year in a separate video but basically I came to France for about a month or two and then I decided um, that I was going to do a ski season. So I came, I started my ski season in December and did December, January, February, March, April and um, that was basically my ski season and um, because I feel like people are like a lot of people are like, when does it start? When does it end? One thing to note that um, ski seasons, ski passes, ski prices, ski jobs, everything kind of changes. It's quite different in different places. So this is just really my own experience. And um, so you can probably do your research if you have specific areas and other specific things. And um, one question is, how did you get your job? And is uh, is there work etc etc there are so many jobs and especially now people are like crying out for people to work in restaurants you can work in a restaurant you could work in a bar you can work with kids you could work as like um like a kind of crush thing you could be like an au pair and you could be work as a chalet host you could if you were qualified work as like ski instructor and um, there's literally so many jobs like so you could work at cleaning cleanings apparently um really good money and um, you could work as a driver driving people to and from the airport so there's really so many jobs and um, i personally chose i came on my own didn't know anyone didn't know how to ski and um, so i knew that i wanted a job that i'd be out like meeting people because i was like obviously i wanted to make friends so that's kind of why I chose to work in a restaurant kind of bar and um, because it was a good way of meeting people, making friends. And honestly, most of the people who I became friends with and who are still friends with now, I met them through work and they kind of introduced me to more, to more and more people. So if you're going on your own and you don't know anyone and you're kind of up for making friends and meeting new people, I would definitely um, kind of recommend or like a bar or a restaurant or something. I actually organized the job before I got here. I actually went on to, I did my ski season in Chamonix. So I actually um, knew kind of a friend of a friend who lived here and he kind of um, told me about this like Facebook page and he was like, maybe say something in there, you might get a job. So I kind of like posted something and immediately loads of people got back to me. And that's how I kind of found my, found my job. So it was kind of organized in advance. And then I kind of organized that where I was living was like close to where I was working, close to ski lifts. Um, so I kind of had done that before I came. Um, I know a lot of people though, who just kind of um, came, didn't have a job, didn't have accommodation, they just kind of sorted it out when they're here. <clears throat> that also actually really does work because there's so many jobs and you can kind of figure it out as you go. Um, one thing I would personally advise is I chose to work somewhere that accommodation wasn't included and I was really lucky that I really liked, um, I really liked my work, well, um, didn't mind my work, I was happy with my job. Um, Whereas some people, I don't know, some people, they do, they work somewhere and it like includes their accommodation. But I, I obviously heard stories of people who maybe didn't like their job so much and wanted to leave, but then they felt like they couldn't because their accommodation was included. And they'd have nowhere to live then, etc. So that's one thing to note that maybe um, if you had your own accommodation and then found a job, because that way, if you didn't like your job, you could always leave it and um, get a new job. Um, but also I have heard obviously really good experiences of people who worked and their accommodation was was provided or worked in chalets and they loved their job and it's fine so it kind of really does depend on the person and what you like and everyone's experience is a little bit different. Another thing to note about working in for example in a restaurant or something like that they were kind of really helpful and helped me like organize. I'd never skied before a lot of people think I skied before um, I have not. I'm absolutely addicted and love skiing now. I've skied so much, but um, they kind of helped me like organize 
like getting like obviously I didn't buy like brand new skis like getting secondhand skis everything like discounted a bit more cheaper so that was really helpful and I was really lucky that way and also it's just like such a good sense of achievement when I don't know the first day I was like sitting I had no idea how to ski um sitting on the ski lift with my skis and my everything that I like just bought and I was like boo um <laughs> learning how to ski but uh yeah basically I had never skied before and um I just got my gear through work and um, everyone jokes and said that I was like a woman who took off into the mountain with skis which was literally what I did I like watched some YouTube videos and was like went and I ended up falling in love with it and yeah but I remember like definitely like watching ski ski like because it's, it's like constantly go, 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 go. You're working, you're skiing. I remember like at the very beginning, like sitting on the chairlift, like watching like a a skiing video, trying to like learn a new technique or something like as it was going. Um, so yeah, I definitely did kind of, and then obviously um, you make friends and you start skiing with people. I ended up skiing with some like amazing people. And obviously when you ski with good people, your skiing comes up and um, progresses a lot quicker you're obviously like trying to like keep up with everyone and um yeah and then by the end when I had like really progressed in skiing it's it's also really I actually really enjoyed skiing on my own some days but also skiing with people is so much fun and um, whether it's like the chats on the chairlift or just like learning like the different everyone has like their own like style or technique when they're skiing and you really like get to know that when you're skiing with people for um a long time and then one thing is the ski pack is probably one of the priciest things and um, kind of varies from place to place and um, some jobs will like give you the accommodation give you the ski pass and like that getting a ski pass included in your job is really good i didn't but it was i got like a contract from work to say that i was a seasonal worker so i could go to the um go to the place where you get your ski pass and show. So I got like a discounted price, which was definitely a lot cheaper than I had friends who came out for a week um, than like a week ski pass or even the annual kind of pass that you can get. Are, one thing to note is that seasonal jobs are quite understanding and they are willing to like work with you because obviously they want a happy worker. They want you to work for them and they want you to be happy. So, well, most, I don't know every job, but most jobs. So they are quite like, will give you time to ski and I know some places some jobs where like they give um workers like three days off as opposed to two days off and I would definitely make sure that when you're getting a job to get a job that you can that like guarantees consecutive days off because I know some people who like maybe got two days off a week but it could have been like a, a Wednesday and like a Monday or something so they don't have like two consecutive days off and I definitely think two consecutive days off is really needed because you are working a lot and like it's your skiing loads it's cold you might be going out as well so like it, it it's tough sometimes so definitely two days is um consecutive days is definitely and then yeah I would say come with an open mind you meet the most amazing people I even love skiing and I even started snowboarding at the end because I was like so obsessed with skiing but one thing to note that it is hard as in like you can be working really long hours really long days and then also you're trying to like motivate yourself to go skiing and also going out as well so you might be lacking some days on sleep um, but uh, yeah you just kind of push on and like the realities is I was quite like, go, 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 go. And probably should have rested and stayed at home. Some days I didn't, I went skiing. Uh, but like, obviously there are days where like, you might be, um, if you have a really intense job, you might be actually too tired to go skiing. So that's like one reality of it. Um, if you're working long hours and stuff like that. And um, one thing to note that is April as well, but like the busiest season was February. Um, but April, like don't ride off April like wasn't it actually snowed on my birthday the 2nd of April so like there's good skiing in April and I was lucky enough that uh, I think my contract was till March and then I was working a bit I extended my contract a bit into April but I definitely got a lot more skiing done then and um, because everything was just a bit less busy but it was still like busy um, and to be honest and um, working more in months like February is actually better because like I feel like at the beginning you get used to having like 
on more uh, kind of like not so many tourists and stuff and not queuing for chairlifts whereas in February to be honest it's not the greatest time to ski on piste because it's like super crowded and like you might have to wait for ages to get on a ski lift and I don't know I feel like I personally got so used to just like doing loops and not having like to wait and queue and stuff so it was really like oh my god you have to wait to get on the chairlift and um, but maybe if you want to do some like off-piste and touring and stuff like that probably better in February to avoid all the crowds and another thing I'd say is kind of look after your health a little bit it's really hard when you're like skiing on the side working all the all the time going out partying trying to have like your ski season um like I would definitely I started like drinking like um like vitamin c like Barocca kind of drinks in the morning just to be like getting some nutrients and like um to keep going some people asked me how did I find being away for Christmas I was actually that was probably one of the biggest things I was it's like my first I've done a lot of, a lot of traveling and been away for good periods of long periods of time um on my own as well before and I was quite scared about Christmas I didn't really know I thought maybe I might be like really homesick and stuff and I actually wasn't that <laughs> homesick which I don't know is good or bad um, obviously I rang home and it was really nice but I also had a really nice time here I was actually working but I like went to a friend's house who I'd met in the evening we all had like Christmas dinner and went skiing the next day so definitely I wouldn't like let that put you off too much and um, because at the beginning I was like oh no I won't be able to go home for Christmas and um, but it was actually fine and I yeah I kind of surprised myself because I thought I'd be much more homesick and stuff um, but no not really um, I had an amazing ski experience and I'm actually still now that I think about it I'm actually still in the same room that I came my first ever time on my own to family didn't know anyone didn't know how to ski and nearly a year later now I'm still here and um, that will be changing shortly if you were like me you always wanted to ski and like have the opportunity to ski loads and um, definitely would recommend you will learn so much about yourself about others in the most beautiful place and um, and yeah absolutely no regrets and I think if you are scared about doing it I would say just do it but yeah I never skied before so I basically like typed into google like equipment you need for skiing and well actually I had skied one time when I was like 16 15 but only for a week and my uncle taught me thank you John Pierre and um, but it was it was only I think like four days or something and it was a long time ago so I couldn't really remember anything and um, but yeah so I like typed into google that oh I was like okay I need a helmet and I need poles and like ski boots skis um, and by the end it's literally you're skiing every day well I basically do <laughs> ski every day even if I had like two hours in the morning before work I would go up and ski for two hours and um, so it kind of depends on how much you're willing to push yourself how little or how much you want to do and um, but you are like some days I, if I started was working at 12 I'd try ski in the morning and um, if I was working at three I'd definitely do like a get up early and do like nearly a full day skiing and um, so yeah kind of depends on the person so I hope this was helpful and um, I feel like I probably left out loads of things but if maybe I can make another one or if I think of more things I'll write them down below and um, please like and subscribe and um, thank you for watching mm -hmm.